Hey guys, if you like this Q&A video with Cressy, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Feel free to share this video with your friends and family, whoever you feel like needs it, and leave a comment below with what your favorite things about African greys are. I'm curious to read them. How did you not take it personally when she chose Dave as her person? Um, I think because all of our birds are great with us as individuals. Uh, just because she prefers Dave doesn't mean that I don't have some awesome stuff with her. So I taught her how to say her name. I taught her all like the little tricks that she knows. He taught her the larger routines and then we both taught her free flight. But I mean, she's great to just hang out with me. If he's around, of course, she's gonna prefer him, but I don't know, it doesn't really bother me. I have my own birds that prefer me as well, so I feel like it kind of evens itself out and she'll land on us equally. So if we're free flying outside, she's just as likely to land on me as she is on Dave. So it never feels like a crazy imbalance or anything. It's not like she's avoiding me by any means. She knows that we're still cool. Um, I just know that she prefers to get her love from Dave, and that's fine. I do too. I can relate to you. Can people other than you and Dave hold her? Yeah, so Cressy and Jinx and Bondi are our birds that we really socialize with people and we have go on people for photos and things of that nature. Or even if we're free flying, those are kind of the birds that if somebody's like, hey, can I come take a photo? Yep, um, these are the birds that we're most likely gonna put on you. So yeah, she's incredibly friendly. She understands that going to somebody is a trick so she willingly does that. And for photos, it's actually super cute. If we put her on somebody's shoulder, she'll actually nestle her beak either in your ear or against your cheek and like lean in for the photo. It's adorable. She's the only one that does it. So cute. What are hormonal phases like for her? Oh man, guys, I am filming my series called O Flock <laughs> that goes through the problems that I have with my own birds and I show how I'm working through them in each um, unedited training session video for my patrons. And my biggest hurdle with Cressy's episodes on this have been that she gets horny so easily and it derails our training. So I kind of talk about and show what I do to get through a training session so I don't have to just end every single one just because she's getting hormonal. Um, so there's a few things that I, that I do do and I think the big key with it is figuring out things that are an untrigger. So things that can get her out of feeling hormonal. And uh, with Cressy, it's gonna be, <laughs> as my patrons will see, it, the struggle is real. Uh, but there are a few tricks that I have that get her out of feeling horny. And one of the cool things about the relationship between me and her and then her and Dave is that she's more likely to get triggered from Dave. So a lot of the times when you guys see us filming videos, she'll be with me or on me because she's less likely to show that hormonal behavior with me than versus him. So that's kind of a cool thing. I can hang out with her longer than he can for the most part without triggering any sort of hormonal behavior. Yay me. So there's a little upside to not being the favorite favorite. What is her favorite thing to do when you and her are just hanging out? Um, Cressy loves being just pet and just literally just hanging out. She's one of our few birds that is just content to just be. Bondi, my rose-breasted cockatoo, is literally the opposite. <laughs> she is not content to just be. She's got to be doing something. Um, so that's kind of the nice chill thing about Cressy is she's just content to hang out on a stand. She'll start chewing on a toy. She will, she's really this calm all the time unless something freaks her out. Where are you going? Thinking about something? Grizzer 10, Grizzer 10. Do you want to show him a trick real quick? We can change it up. You show me go upside down. Uh-oh, we're getting horny. Go upside down. So let's show her a treat to get her out of it. You guys are gonna see how we do it. Okay. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Give everybody a wave. Yay! 
Oh yeah, you do know that. She knows the head shake too. I forgot about that one. Okay, I'm gonna put you up here. Keys, you're getting all feely. These two questions kind of go hand in hand. Who does she mimic the most, birds or humans? Which I talked about, it was actually Bandit that she mimics the most. Um, and why was she mean to, i.e. antagonize Bandit out of all your birds? And it's, I think because of the age difference, Bandit is nuts. Those of you guys that know baby galahs especially, or just young galahs, like they're so crazy and full of life and they have so much to do and they just wanna play. <laughs> Gregor! Oh. oh, your game got dead! No more game! <laughs> night night! You wanna go night night? <laughs> and Cressy does not want to play. Cressy's pretty chill. She wants to hang out and be mellow and have some quiet time, and Bandit is not quiet time. They, he was constantly bothering her and trying to get a reaction out of her, and she was constantly trying to tolerate him until she just couldn't anymore and then it would end up in a kind of a little bit of a chase where she would finally turn and be like, leave me alone. And he would kind of find that fun. He's like, hey, finally, we got a reaction. Like any attention's good attention. You know, cockatoo, cockatoo uh, logic. So that's why. <laughs> I always refer to him as the annoying little brother because that's kind of the dynamic that I saw between the two, but I'm an only child, so who knows. Do African greys make good free flyers? You know, I think all birds are amazing free flyers. Their ability to fly is, is fantastic. It's what they're designed to do. As far as the safety of it goes though, she's not loud. So her contact call is very quiet. It's harder to hear. Um, and she's just harder to see. It's so weird because we can be in these flat open places that are mostly white or, or brown and you still can't see her. And it's really frustrating, especially in Moab. She's really hard to see. It's why we have the least amount of photos of her in flight. She's incredibly hard to capture in flight. Um, so, so I would say as far as ability wise, yeah, they're fantastic flyers. As far as safety goes, um, not so much, not my, not my favorite to fly just because it scares me, it scares me more to fly her than my son Conyers. Oh, I love this question. So does Cressy have the typical African gray traits? The only one that I would say she has, cause Dave and I are always like, did we luck out? I mean, other than the fact that her talking ability is pretty pathetic. But the only typical African gray trait that she has is life will be dandy and then one day you walk up to something that you've had for a while and she'll be like, whoa, 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 when did that get here? And you're just kind of like, what? This isn't new. Um, and also with new things, she can be phobic. So African grays are pretty known to be pretty phobic. And she does have that trait. Now it's very minimal. I need to give her credit where credit is due. Dave literally put in this three routine, um, routine into our show. And it was literally three routines in one. And Cressy had never done them before. Uh, she's been on stage before she's performed with Dave before. So all that was done. And Dave had performed those tricks before with other birds, but never with Cressy. And he didn't even give her a rehearsal. He just put her in and she did fantastic. And she's done fantastic ever since. So that kind of stuff, she's amazing. Um, but then every once in a while we did this part in our show where I would pick a random person from the audience to hold up a hula hoop and she would fly through it. And this one time I picked somebody who had dreadlocks and that was not okay. <laughs> with Cressy. So, um, and that was harder to work through because we just didn't have anybody else with dreadlocks around. So I don't think we, we really got to work through that in the sort of depth that we normally would work through something. But yeah, you know, the phobicness, she has some of it, not to the extent of most African greys I see, but she still presents it every now and then. What other African gray traits are there that you might have? Um, we often say that we lucked out with her. We would be terrified to get 
another African Grey. I don't think we would ever get another African Grey after Cressy, just because she's been so amazing and we feel like we just lucked out. Like she's not a real African Grey. <laughs> she's, I don't know, she's so awesome that we're just like, what happened? Why is she so great? <laughs> so yeah, and I know that somebody else had asked me would I never would I ever get another African Grey, and I would not. I would not. Cressy, my only one. Mm, love your face. Okay, so which leads me to this next question: What's the hardest part of owning a Grey, and would you ever get another one? So no, I would never get another one. I think the hardest thing, particularly with Cressy is that she can be so chill and calm and then certain things just tick her off. Uh, Bandit obviously <laughs> ticked her off, but now it tends to be the Sun Conyers. So sometimes she's okay with them and other times she just doesn't want them around and is so annoyed by them. So, um, and these feathers, like her FU feathers will definitely tick up and she will just get huge and puffed and, and real angry. And when she gets like that, you can't even have her step up without her taking it out on you or the closest thing. So she definitely can get seriously moody about other birds and how much they annoy her. <laughs> She's easily annoyed by other birds, I'd say. She also tends to stand her ground. So if, a, if a, one of the birds picks a fight with her or is like, hey, get off that perch, I don't want you here, she will stand up to that bird. And that makes me nervous just because she's smaller. She's just a smaller parrot. So it freaks me out when it becomes her or macaw. And she had kind of a, a standoff with Comet one day and didn't, didn't come out on top of that one. Would you say she's a quiet bird? So Cressy's incredibly quiet unless she's practicing her talking, which she doesn't do in front of us. I just kind of can hear her practicing. Uh, the other thing that she does that's incredibly obnoxious and annoying, it's probably the worst quality that she has, but a totally normal one, is her alarm call. Her alarm call is incredibly high-pitched. It hurts our ears. We hate it. <laughs> But at the same time, we're glad to know what she's alarming about. So, you know, she'll do this when we're on a free flight trip. She'll do this if she's near a window and she sees something dangerous. She'll do this outside in the aviaries if they see something that she deems as threatening. She will do her alarm call and uh, it's just really not pleasant. <laughs> what you get when you get a bird. So it's not like it was a learned obnoxious screaming behavior by any means, it's legitimate. Are African greys easier to deal with than macaws? Not to me, but I'm sure some people will disagree. I've learned over the years of working with all the different project birds and just clients birds that I'm really a macaw person. I, I just connect and get macaws. I also feel like they probably have the most obvious body language among all the species. I think they're the easiest to read. Um, but in, and not that African greys are hard by any means. I think that they're fairly easy to read as well, but I prefer macaws overall. When I think of all the behavioral problems I've ever come across or, or anything like that, I, I'm going to go with macaws. Sorry, Grizzy. Love you. I love her eye though. Like her face. Your face, your face is so pretty. It's super pretty. Who is Cressy's favorite person right now? What's the percentage looking like? Um, I would say it always looks like I'm doing really great when it's just me and Cressy, but if Dave walked in the door, I'd be chopped liver right now. Ah. So, whatever percentage that is, I'm not great at math, guys. Has Cressy ever encountered any major injury? If yes, what did you do? Uh, yeah, so I think the only major injury, it wasn't totally major, but the only injury that I can think of that she has had was when I had the entire, so I've converted my whole garage to just hold giant aviaries for these guys. Um, and I had it wide open and I was doing some major cleaning when I heard her yell and I came over and in a divided aviary where there's a wall in between, but it's, um, it's graded. It's like a graded wall. 
uh, she had gotten her toe was being held by Comet on the other side. And so they had gotten into some sort of predicament and he wasn't letting go of her toe. So once he did, she had a pretty good gash on her toe and I immediately cleaned it, stopped the bleeding on it, and just kept a really close eye on it. And then I had to clean it every single day, I think two to three times a day, make sure that her aviary was really clean, which is really hard because she gets stuff just everywhere. Um, so I had to try to really control that so that she wasn't getting food and nastiness on her perches and then walking on it with an open wound. Um, and the wound was on the top of her toe but still so i just made sure to clean it and i used some neosporin on it every day and uh, we bathed you all the time we just made sure that you were nice and healthy and felt good and then i think i had patty come over and check her out and i gave her some pain meds for the first two days just to make sure that she wasn't hurting because she was holding it up for a while what you want to do patty. Oh, Grezzy, you're the sweetest. So that's a little thing that you guys probably don't know is Cressy and I have our own little language and I don't know when it started. I think during show stuff it started, but I, to calm her down, I would always go and it worked and now she does it back to me. <laughs> so, so that's a little insider info that people don't know that I didn't even think about till you just did it to me. You go on down. Christian, Christian. Does she ever get jealous when you're spending time with your other birds? Not necessarily from me, but from Dave more so, and only if it involves the Conyers. Then she's not really jealous, she's just annoyed. I, I mean, if you guys see Cressy, she just gets annoyed. <laughs> really easy. If anybody ruins her chill, she's annoyed. Does she usually prefer being pet or not? Yeah, Cressy is one of our more cuddly birds, but she prefers it more so from Dave than me. So she'll last forever with Dave petting her, but when it's me, it's kind of short-lived. I just wait for her to ask for it and then give it, and then she's over it pretty quick. So this is interesting. I know a lot of greys are talkative. How come you didn't train her to say more words or talk more? Uh, it's something that we've never really focused on training talking to our birds real specifically. The only time I did it was with Bandit and that's because he showed a real interest in mimicking me and he mimicked my voice really, really easily. Some birds mimic tones more easily than others. And Cressy, it's just funny. She just does not have that high of an interest in talking. Uh, so, and she's still a closet talker, which Jinx was originally as well. And I had to be so sneaky to capture his talking on cue and be able to get him to talk in front of people. It took a really long time. So I think maybe that'll be the same thing for Cressy is just kind of waiting for her to, to get more comfortable doing it in front of us and making it so that we can capture it. So that's how I actually got her to say Cressy was, I had to be really sneaky, so. Even now we will hear her say certain things and you're, you're just not sure. You're like, oh, I think she heard, did she just say that? And it's too late, you, you missed capturing it because you're never expecting it. So it can be one of those things that's harder for us to capture. But she, one day she was like, hi guys. And I was like, what? Um, and it sounded like my mother. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure she has caught on to some things that my mom says because they stay in aviaries out at my parents' house sometimes in the really nice weather in the summers. And so I think she's starting to pick up some stuff. So the more we have the opportunity to kind of capture it and put it on cue, the more we will. But talking has never been something that's a huge priority to us. We don't care. We just find it funny or cute. And if the birds want to do it, we try to capitalize on it and if they don't want to we're not concerned but Cressy's more of a whistler those of you that got our stop screaming course got to hear the difference between screaming and a contact call and Cressy's contact call with Dave is adorable because I can't whistle so I don't have it and I'm not in the club but her and Dave do a whistle where one of them does the first part and the other one completes it in the second part and it's just super cute so she's way more of a whistler than a talker but hopefully someday she'll just surprise us all and whip out an amazing vocabulary that we didn't know she had. 
Is Cressy a strong flyer? It seems that in free flight videos, she doesn't do as much long distance. Um, this is the really hard thing to show in video with both the Sun Conyers and Cressy. Um, we lose sight of them. <clears throat> we lose sight of them real fast, real easy. There was a video I just did when we were in Pahrump and I was trying to take video of the Conyers exploratory flight and you just couldn't see them in the frame anymore. They were in it but you couldn't see them. And it's kind of the same with Cressy. She's so hard to videotape and it's hard to capture that a lot of the time because we are more on edge and, and trying to be more present when she's flying, a lot of the times we just put down the camera and focus on the fact that she's flying. Uh, you know, our bird's safety is paramount to us. So we wanna make sure that we're really on top of it and paying attention and, doing all the things right. And so a lot of the times we've been videotaping all day or I'll just set a camera up and you guys just can't see her. Um, it's just really incredibly hard to capture. So she is a strong flyer. She is really good. She takes a few days to get into shape. So she always starts off thinking that she's in better shape than she is on day one and day two. But after that, she usually does really, really well. Um, and I would say, yeah, she's a, she's a strong flyer. She just needs a chance to get into shape because based on where we live, we have all four seasons. We can't fly our birds safely where we live all the time. And so that means that we really dedicate our trips to flying them and, and making it for them. And that means that it's kind of about getting them back into shape for the first half of the trip. So that can be hard and painful and exhausting. And then, you know, they're basically working out. So although they're playing, it's hard work too. So you gotta keep that in mind that they aren't going to be as crazy good the first few days and um and it's way easier to film those first few days <laughs> what spooks cressy um blah, 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 blah. nope nothing um she's not very easy to spook and i just lost my spot she's like whatever just just pet me just pet me for the whole video people will watch 40 minutes of that right Okay, so the last question and probably the most common is whether or not I would recommend African Greys. And just based on how often they are surrendered to sanctuaries, I'm gonna say a big fat no. Um, Cressy's amazing, like I completely adore this bird, but she also has, you know, certain things that aren't perfect, just like all of us. All animals have pros and cons to them. Um, but I do think that because African greys are naturally phobic and most people just don't implement training, not even accidentally, uh, that if you don't properly desensitize them and properly socialize them, that they will just grow older having these phobias that become these major problems and lead to like the plucking behaviors that you see in, in a lot of sanctuaries. And, um, just all the behavioral problems that most people can't work through. It's when they really escalate into, into these distinct and crazy phobias that people are just kind of lost on what to do with these birds. So getting a baby is one thing and, and baby animals are so cute and sweet and they're not trying to hurt you and they're just all the good things and they're easy, but once you have an adult animal that now has a problem from a very young age and you don't know how to reverse it or fix it or conquer it, that's where people just end up kind of giving up or feeling overwhelmed. And um, that's where it just kind of all spirals out of control. So I just think that most parrots in general, just most species are just hard, <laughs> just hard for most people. So I would recommend if you're thinking about getting an African gray, um, that you go and just be with some, be with some at sanctuaries or be with some at your friend's house, like get some experience with them and see if they're everything that you were thinking they were gonna be. Chrissy is finding the remote. Um, but that's what I would always recommend is just going and getting the experience with them to see if, if it's really what you're thinking it's going to be and Ask about the stories with sanctuaries. Ask why was this bird given up? Why was that bird surrendered? Why is this bird here? How long has it been here? And ask all the questions to get the backgrounds and see, does that relate to you? Is that something that might happen to you? Is that something that you could foresee? I think that if you don't play out these scenarios with these birds and say, could I handle an African gray on its worst day? 
almost every single day. If you can't handle that and you're not ready for that, then you don't deserve it on its best day. Um, because these animals are really hard and they're, they can be really complicated, but they can also be awesome and incredibly rewarding. But they're not designed to live in captivity, so you're kind of working against nature in that respect. And although I've seen some really amazing, thriving parrots in captivity with people, I've also seen probably more so parrots not thriving. Are you coming up here? What are you doing? Um, so I just feel like people should do their utmost research and literally try to talk themselves out of it. <laughs> and... Uh, and find all the reasons why not to do it. You know, fostering a bird is a really amazing, great thing to do. So I highly recommend doing that. That's how you gain a lot of experience with, uh, with birds. And it tends to take a lot of pressure off of the experience so that you can have an open mind and just be like, hey, I got this amount of time to make this big of a difference in this bird's life, let's go. And it tends to be a different mindset and, um, and something really awesome to do. It's kind of the mindset that I have with project birds. I know that I only have an allotted amount of time to make the most progress possible and make the biggest difference uh, positive difference in that bird's life. And so you really give it your all and you put everything in, so. Oh, you pooped. You pooped. Can I move you out of there? Um, so yeah, I don't recommend African greys and that's just because of the failure rate with how often people end up regretting their decision. So do all the research you can to make sure that you're not gonna regret your decision in getting one. Hey guys, I would love to find out what you were most surprised to find out about Cressy. Let me know in the comments below. And if you wanna see more Cressy in my videos, please let me know that too. I tend to match her mood level and be very mellow when I film videos with Cressy. <laughs> but if you guys enjoy that tempo, I would love to give you more of it. So just let me know in the comments. Cresserton, you didn't make a sound. Are you gonna show them how hyper you are? We'll show you guys how easily she spooks and flies away. And that's the scariest Cressy gets.